If someone was to come to you and say, I read on the headline news that so and so, prince, king, president, scholar, celebrity, loves you. He announced this openly on TV. How would you feel? You'd feel honored. He singled you and me out saying, oh, I love so-and-so openly and publicly on TV. How would you then feel if you know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves you? How would this make you feel? How should a believer feel when he knows that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the chosen one loves him. How would the feeling be if you know that Allah loves you? In the books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu said, and the wording is that of Muslims. إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا when Allah loves a slave, He calls upon Jibreel and tells him, I love so and so. So love him. So Jibreel loves him. And then Jibreel makes a call in the heavens. Allah loves so and so, so love him. So the angels in the heavens love him. And then his love is placed on earth, meaning in people's hearts. What a feeling. What an honor. Don't you see that sometimes you meet people and you see, subhanAllah, this person is so close to the hearts. You feel that everybody loves him. Well, this is the result of the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. But the love of Allah Azza wa Jal is something that is earned and is not just given free. Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam guided us to qualities and deeds that result in Allah loving us. Number one, following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and adhering to his sunnah. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهَ Say, O Muhammad, if you truly love Allah, then follow me, adhere to my sunnah, follow me. Allah will love you. And this is not a selective love. I like this, so I'll do it, and I don't like this, so I leave it out. No, the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in order for us to be deserving of the love of Allah, must be complete and comprehensive, a code of life. Live it, lived according to it. We can't be selective, choose this from the Sunnah and leave this out from the Sunnah. That's not adhering to the sunnah. That's adhering to desire. Another matter. And they're all achievable. Because Allah Azza wa Jal will not enjoin or legislate something that is not achievable. Because it won't be fair otherwise. Taqwa. Inna Allah yuhibbul muttaqeen. Indeed, Allah loves the pious. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this is in the book of Imam Muslim, Inna Allah yuhibbul taqiyya al-ghaniyya al-khafi. Allah loves a person who is pious, self-contented and free from needs, from, or of needs, of all needs from people, and prefers to be unnoticed. He doesn't like to be under spotlight. 
He tries to stay as far as possible from show off. Taqwa is achieved by placing a barrier between you and the wrath and punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is achieved by fulfilling the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal and refraining from everything He prohibited. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another quality is frequent repentance. Inna Allah yuhibbu tawwabin. Allah loves those who frequently repent. You see, humankind are prone to evil. Add to that the plots and whispers of shaitan. In addition to the inclination, natural inclination to fulfilling desires, these factors add up and weaken the soul, weaken the heart, weaken the slave which make him sin. Up until here, this is normal because this is the nature of mankind. His Iman fluctuates and that's when he sins, when it weakens. But people differ with what comes after that, repenting from what they have done wrong. Some people don't even bother rep repenting to Allah altogether and some do repent but there are also two types of people in this regard some immediately repent and some delay and some of them delay until it's too late and death strikes them before they know it see it's normal to sin not okay but normal because this is the nature of mankind the Prophet ﷺ said, Kullu ibn Adam All mankind are fallible, they make mistakes. So this is expected. But people differ with what comes after that. Repenting to Allah. And notice this, the verse says, continuously repent because we always make mistakes. It's not a single mistake which we repent from and that's it. See, we make mistakes round the clock. And that's why we need to repent round the clock. See, repentance comes from fearing Allah and glorifying Allah. See, the believer knows that eventually he will die. So he fears the meeting with Allah Azza wa Jal while sees upon error and mistake and sin. And he realizes and believes firmly that Allah Azza wa Jal will resurrect people and hold each one of us to account. And he fears Allah. He glorifies Him. So he hastens to repentance. What results from that? Allah rejoices at the repentance of the slave accepts his repentance, loves him, and not only that, when that repentance is accepted by Allah, it's, and it is sincere, Allah Azza wa Jal will change these sins into reward. As he says in the Quran, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَحَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Except for those who repent, believe and act righteously. Those are the ones whom Allah Azza wa Jal will change their bad deeds into good deeds, into reward. And as Allah is ever forgiving. That's the difference between people and that's the difference in the results and the outcome. Ihsan 
is yet another quality. Wallahu yuhibbu al-muhsineen. See, ihsan is a very broad term that has many different meanings depending on the context. But some of its meanings is kindness, perfecting the deeds. And when it's with regards to Allah Azza wa Jal is to perform the act of worship or deed in the most perfect manner sincerely for His sake. Performing it whilst feeling that Allah Azza wa Jal is seeing you, is right there seeing you. And you can see him watching you. This is the feeling one need to have. One must have when he is performing a deed. Allah is watching. So I need to be as perfect as I can. To Allah belongs the best and most exalted example when one is at his job and he's told that the GM is going to make a, a round in the company and he's going to see how each person performs and he suddenly walks into the room where you're working. You think you don't need to answer aloud. How perfect will you be in the performance, in your appearance, in the way you present yourself and represent yourself? Totally different when you know that he's gone. He is not going to be making around, or nobody is monitoring. And to Allah belongs the most exalted of examples. We know that Allah Azza wa Jal is watching, yet we don't take this into consideration when we're performing the deeds. With regards to this, is with regards to the Creator, with regards to the creation. Well, it starts with oneself. By protecting oneself from punishment. How? By fulfilling servitude to the Lord, to the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. With others, with kinship, with relatives, with wives and children, maintaining ties, being fair for those who, married, who are married to more than wife, one wife, being fair between the children and not favoring one over others. With other people, being kind and benevolent to them, helping them out in times of hardship, fulfilling their needs. Ihsan is even enjoined upon us towards animals. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet said, In Allah katab al ihsan ala kulli shay. Allah has enjoined ihsan to everything. And then he gave an example so that people will not only think of humans. So when you slaughter, do it with kindness and perfection. How is this? When you're about to slaughter, he said, وسلم, they make sure your knife is sharp so the animal does not suffer. Don't you see that the prostitute who gave that dog a drink of water using her shoe was admitted into Jannah because of her kindness, of her ihsan to this thirsty dog. One thing that must be enjoined must be spread as a spirit and a feeling amongst Muslims is to love each other for the sake of Allah because this results in Allah loving us. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, a man went to visit another man in a different village. And as he was walking, Allah Azza wa Jal sent an angel to him on his path and said, where are you going? He said, I am going to visit so and so. He said, do you have any worldly need from him? Do you have anything pertaining to this dunya? 
that you want from him, you expect from him. He said, no, 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 no. I am only going there because I love him for the sake of Allah. He said, I am the messenger of Allah to you. Conveying to you that Allah loves you for your love for your brother. An important question to ask ourselves, brothers. How many people are there, out there, whom we love purely for the sake of Allah? Nothing else but Allah. No need from dunya. It's an important question to ask. And if there is none or very few, then we need to work harder on this because it will make us deserving of the love of Allah. Sabr, patience. Allah loves the patient, the patient ones. In Allah, I have a Abdul Wahid ibn Yazid. And this story is related to only one type of patience. See, patience, as the scholar said, it's to be patient when fulfilling a command, being patient when refraining from a sin, and being patient when afflicted with something that's harmful and painful and appears evil from the decrees of Allah. Well, this story is pertaining to that last time. Abdul Wahid ibn Zayd, rahmatullahi alayhi, said, One day I left my house going to the other side of town. And on the way, I came across a black man who was suffering from leprosy crippled and blind. And children were throwing rocks at him until he bled. He said, I noticed from distance that he is moving his lips, mumbling with something that, which I couldn't hear. He said, so I came close to him and heard him say the following, O oh my master, if you were caused, if you would cause my body to be cut up with clippers and my bones to be cut using a saw, that would only make you love, make me love you more. So, do to me as you desire. I will continue to love you. That perseverance and patience. When one is afflicted, is loved by Allah Azza wa Jal. So we need to be content when we are struck with an adversity or a hardship or a calamity, we need to remember that this patience and perseverance will result in much goodness in this life and the hereafter. Allah Azza wa Jal will fill our hearts with pleasure and shower us with rewards in the hereafter. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه Purification. Wallahu yuhibbul mutahirin. Allah loves those who purify themselves. Now, purification here is of two types tangible and a non tangible type. Tangible meaning to purify oneself, oneself in clothes from tangible impurities by uh, performing ritual bath like ghusl or wudu and so on. And the spiritual one is by cleansing the heart from diseases like spite, envy, arrogance, pride, purifying this oneself from sin, 
and all other types of diseases of the heart. التوكل. Allah loves those who rely on Him. Those who rely on Him in all their affairs. They resort to Him in all their affairs. They utilize the legislated means, worldly means, but their hearts rely on Him. They utilize the means because we are instructed to utilize means. But we're also commanded not to rely on them, but to rely on the one who can make them effective. There is no contradiction between utilizing the means and full reliance on Allah. The Prophet ﷺ was asked by a man who came into the masjid and had his camel outside. He said, I left my she camel outside. Should I tie her or, so she doesn't run away, or rely on Allah, meaning leave her loose and rely on Allah that He will protect her and keep her there. He said, no, tie her and then rely on Allah. Tie her by utilizing the mean. This is utilizing the mean. And then pull, put your trust, full trust in Allah, that He is the one who's going to make this tie ineffective. Because it can be ineffective if your trust and reliance is on it. Good manners. And what a quality to have. The Prophet ﷺ was asked, and this is reported by a Tabarani, classified as authentic by Al Albani. He was asked by a group of people who approached him. He's, they, they said, who are the most beloved of the slaves of Allah to Allah? Those whom Allah loves the most. He said, the ones who are best in manners. Ahasinuhum akhlaqa. And I will conclude with a quality that is reported by Al-Bukhari. And it is a Qudsi narration. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِرِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ My slave will continue to draw closer to me by virtue of performing optional deeds until I love him. So, performing optional deeds more and more and more result in the love of Allah Azza wa Jal to this lady. You see the issue as Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullah alayhi said. He said the issue, the challenge is not that you love Allah. We all claim this. لَيْسَ الشَّأْنُ فِي أَن تُحِبَّ اللَّهَ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّأْنَ أَن يُحِبَّكَ اللَّهَ the matter, the challenge, the real essence of the issue is that Allah loves you. But what results from this love? Okay, we know that we, if we do this and this and this and that, Allah loves us. What results from this love? In this very narration, Allah continues to say, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ And when I love him, what happens? Brothers, sisters, please listen attentively. I become his hearing with which he hears and his sight with which he sees and his hand with which he strikes and his foot which, with, with which he walks. In other words, you only hear things that, that Allah Azza wa loves. You only look at things that Allah Azza wa Jalla loves. You only do things with your hands that Allah Azza wa Jalla loves. And you only walk towards places that Allah Azza wa Jalla loves. And then that's not the end of it. If he asks of me, if he supplicates me, I will give him. And if he 
seeks my protection and refuge, I will surely protect him. Success and joy in this life and the hereafter is when Allah Azza wa Jal loves you. He will support you. He will protect you. He will enable you to do more and more of good deeds. He will make you firm on faith. He will grant you good end. He will enable you to utter shahada at the time of death. He will give you your book with your right hand. He will put you under his shade in the, in the day of on the day of judgment. He will protect you from the fear of the grave, the fear of that great horrible day. He will admit you into Jannah and protect you from the fire of hell. Aren't these things worth it? Indeed they are. We ask Allah to make us deserving of His love. Allahumma ahinna ala hubbik. Allahumma ahinna ala hubbik. Allahumma arzuqna hubbik wa hubba man yuhibbik. وحب كل عمل يقرر